Well, it is good to be here today. Like I said, my family uh, has been here a few times before. I am T.J. Howell, for those of you who do not know. Of course, I'm in the bulletin. You, you got a little picture there. I don't know where you got that picture from. I'm going to have to ask you. I think he, uh, he, he sniped it on Facebook or something, found it, but he did pretty good. <clears throat> That's my wife and I, and then we have three kids that are with us, and uh, we'll introduce them a little bit later in this morning service. Uh, you'll uh, you'll get to see them a little bit better probably when we, we sing. We're going to sing together. We started singing together a little bit as a family, and it's been fun. We've been enjoying that, and uh, but God has definitely blessed me with a, a, a good family. Uh, my wife, we've been married for coming up on 18 years, and uh, this uh, this June, and we are going to be going out to Nebraska, Hickman, Nebraska. Now, I do have uh, some prayer cards and uh, some things that I will, I'll just grab those now, because I'll say it once again, just later too, but I have some prayer cards that are going to be out there on the uh, on the table out there. They have a picture of our family, talks about where we're going, Hickman, Nebraska, and uh, just kind of give some information there. Also out there, um, I have some more CDs. I, I gave out CDs to, to uh, Pastor Ben a while back so he could bring them to church. And uh, there are CDs that God has uh, allowed me to write the songs. And then my wife played the piano and I sang them. Um, it is not the, the most high quality CD in the world, but it is definitely the best price. It's free. So all you got to do is pick one up. Um, I do ask that, you know, it just be one per family. Um, so... Uh, I can continue to take handles out in churches, but please make yourself uh, avail of yourself to those. I only ask you to do one thing. If you listen to the CD, you pray for us. Uh, when you hear the CD, just pray for us as we're starting a church out there in Hickman, Nebraska. You say, well, where in the world is Hickman? Well, if Hickman is 10 miles south of Lincoln. So if you know where Lincoln, Nebraska, it's a pretty big city there. Uh, we'll be right there south of Lincoln, and uh, honestly, uh, it'll be Fairly close. We could live in, in southern south uh, Lincoln, or we can live there in Hickman. We're trying to find a place right now. So just pray with us there that the Lord will open the door. And uh, we'll see, uh, hopefully, the Lord willing, um, if everything goes well, we'll be moving over there in the middle of May uh, this year. So it's coming up quick and uh, very excited about it. So take your Bibles over to Hebrews is where we're going to be at today. Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the... Uh, our, our, the church plant and kind of a little bit more probably that tonight and maybe a little bit in the Sunday service, morning service, but uh, we'll get into the, the lesson. <clears throat> All right. Hebrews chapter 11. And today I, I've kind of, I was praying about kind of a, a theme and, and the, the thought of the, of, the, of the entire day and what the Lord would just kind of impress on me as far as what I would... Uh, what I should give, and what he, you know, as he speaks, and what what he wants me to speak about, and I started thinking about the things in our lives and and uh, the decisions that we have to make, the the moments of of taking the steps and the faith that we have to have, and I started thinking about faith, and I thought, you know, what a what a great way to start, and so we're going to talk about faith a bit today. Hebrews chapter eleven. Most of you, most of you know that this is a lot of times referred to as the faith chapter. But it starts out in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, the Bible says there, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And then it goes on and lists a bunch of men and talks about the faith and women, about the faith that they had. But... I want you to think about the first three verses today. We're going to start and just look at these verses. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In a world that we live in, we have so many things in our life that is entertaining us. We have so many stories and so many movies and books and shows and things that about uh, things of, of superpowers and magical things and, and make-believe and all this stuff. And it's all these stories that, that you know, as they say, tickle our ears and things that you know, are, are so made up. Yet, when we try to talk about uh, to people, sometimes they see what we are talking about as far as heaven and hell as some of those made up things, but it is not. They see Christianity as faith, as mere stories. And uh, and this world may, may look at it as, as something that, well, I don't, I don't know, that's, it's kind of made up. And if we ask the world, what would they say? When, is this world looking at your faith and seeing something that's real? 
You know, when we open a book, we read through these books, we, we know fiction from nonfiction. It's pretty easy to, to tell it apart. But can this world tell you the difference of your faith by looking at you? Are you an open book? Am I an open book? Is my faith something that they see as an open book? We're going to talk about faith today. Look at verse 3 there. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So faith was beginning in the very beginning of creation. Faith gives us a foundation. Isaiah 48 verse 12 says, Hearken unto me, O Jacob, in Israel, my call. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. This is our God. The foundation of this world was laid, it said there, hath laid the foundation, says, my right hand has spanned the heavens. He says, in faith, mine also hath laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. The power of our God. But he says, hearken to me. Faith gives us a foundation, that foundation that God created this world, the creation that, that takes faith to believe. You know, we weren't there when the world was created. You know, there's a lot of people that have this, uh, the thought, well, evolution, that, that's the way to go. You know, it, it takes, well, that takes just as much faith or more. When you look at this world, you, you see the natural laws of, of physics, the, the entropy, the fact that everything is getting worse. You know, you know, when you build a building, it doesn't just stand there and, and look good for 100 years and look better after 100 years later. We've all driven by those old barns and stuff when we're driving down the road, and if somebody doesn't take care of it, if somebody doesn't maintain it, if somebody doesn't upkeep it, what happens? Entropy happens. It gets worse and worse over time. The weather, the storms, the things in our lives. Same with our cars. You know, if we don't maintain them, if something over time, we have to maintain it. So we know that it's getting worse. Entropy, it, you know, it is the probably the biggest thing against evolution. You know, you don't just throw things together and it comes out better. No matter how much you want to try, no matter how much you want to explain it, it doesn't happen. Yet, it takes faith to believe that. To believe something that goes against the laws of science, that takes even more faith. You know, or even maybe blind faith. I, I don't know, but it, it's a faith that just doesn't make sense. You know, you think about Legos. Uh, my kids, they love Legos. I mean, there's Legos all over our house. I think I have them on the steps. We have them down the stairs, you know, upstairs, downstairs. I think they're in all the, uh, you know, whoever buys our house is going to get a, a Lego set in at least all the ductwork, at least, because <laughs> there, there's Legos everywhere. And, you know, you, you find them at the worst times. Well, you know what? If you, you take all those Legos and you put them in a big sack and you shake it up, then Lego's going to come out and make a little car or a house or a, you know. I mean, you could shake that thing forever. It, it, you, you might get some of them to stick together, but I, I doubt it. It's going to take a, a long time. And you're going to keep shaking, you're going to keep shaking, keep hoping. You're not going to get anything. The thing is, the faith that God created this world, it was a master plan. He put it in, he put it in, in the form and he made it. The foundation that we have takes faith. But yet, how real is that faith? That faith gives us a foundation. We have to use that faith. That foundation is God our rock. In Luke 6, 46, it says... <laughs> Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like the man which built an house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat the heavenly upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. That's what our faith should be, founded upon a rock. We have a foundation. Our faith is that, that foundation should be the rock, and that rock is God. Is our faith founded upon the rock? You think about the, the many different things in our lives that are un, unsure and unsettled. There are so many things, you know. You think about the, the stock markets and you think about all these, these different things in our lives that, you know, we're, we worry about. And, they, you know, they're, they're unsure, you know. Our retirement, when we get there, is it going to be there when I get there? Am I going to have a, am I going to be able to retire? You know, there's so many unsure things in our lives. But thank goodness we have a God that is sure. We have a foundation that is sure. A foundation that is sure that says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Our faith should be sure. But 
when this world looks at us, do they see that? Do they see that when they look at me? Do they see somebody that says, okay, he has a sure foundation? Well, a sure foundation uh, is something that is, is built right. It, it's built the right way. It's going to be, uh, it's going to weather the storms. You know, people are going to look at me. They're going to watch me. I, my wife uh, just recently had a situation, and uh, she, I think she was at the gas station. She was talking to somebody. She goes, hey, I, I know you. I, I, I just, I've seen you before. And my wife's like, really? She goes, yeah, we were sitting outside of, uh, uh, of the Ainsworth Four Corners. My wife went down to go pick up some pizza. Uh, we like the Godfather's pizza there. And uh, my wife went to go pick up the pizza, and she said she walked by this car, and she just smiled at him. And she kept on walking. And the lady said, we'd had a hard day. She said, like, we were coming back from a, a, a long trip or whatever. And she goes, I was just wore out. And she said, that, that made my day when you smiled at me. And you know what? You, you don't even realize it, how you affect other people's lives. When they see you, they're watching. This world is watching you. You think about it. The, the faith that you have, they're watching that faith. And when it goes through the storm and when it goes through the trials, the, the ups and the downs, they, they watch and they say, mm, is it real? They wonder. They, they see you make it through it. They, they see your head held high or they see whatever you're doing. They, okay, wow, maybe it is real. And over time, you start to bring them in. They start to com conversate more. The people at work, they're watching you. Is our faith sure? Is our foundation sure? This world is watching. You know, we're going out to Hickman, Nebraska. I, it's going to be a big change going out there to a place where I don't really know anybody. You know, here I'm working at the Walmart. I'm like, I see half of you in there at Walmart all the time, you know. Brother Sid all the time, you know. I, 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 all the time, just, hey, how you doing? I'm going to miss that, you know. I'm going to miss seeing everybody at Walmart. But it's going to be a whole new group of people that don't know me. That I'm trying to tell about Jesus. And as I stand there and as I work there, I'm going to be working at the Southern Lincoln Walmart as well. When we first get over there, I'll be transferred over there for our first uh, part as we start the, the church. They're going to watch. And they're going to look. And they're going to see if my foundation is sure. Is your faith real? And is it on a sure foundation? Another one, faith gives us a foundation. Look at verse 6 there in Hebrews chapter 11. It's going down, but it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Not only does faith give us a foundation, but faith generates fellowship. When you have faith, when you trust in God and you believe in God, it's gonna, you're going to want to follow him. You're going to want to follow his will. You think about the men that had faith that it speaks about here. Noah, he built the ark. You know, you think about that situation right there. It hadn't rained. So, you know, he's maybe off his rock a little bit. No, he's following what God said. He said, hey, God said it, build an ark. Faith, I trust God. I'm going to build an ark. Think about Abraham. Abraham left his home, left his family. He says, hey, I'm going to make you a great people. I'm going to make you as the sand of the sea. But you need to leave your family and you need to go out and do it on your own. Okay. You know, faith generates fellowship. Moses, he gave up Egypt, gave up, gave up the, the king's palace. He, he followed the Lord. The fellowship with our lives. Proverbs 20, verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. We need to follow. Faith, if our faith is real, it's going to generate fellowship. This world's watching that. They're going to see, does he really... Do what he says. Not only does he say that he's a Christian, you know, this guy that stands up here, does he, does he actually do what he says he, does, he believes? Does it generate the fellowship? You know, if you, generate, if you truly have faith in God and you truly have real faith, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to be helping out on, on the activities. I'm going to be on the work day. I see you guys on the... You're thinking, you guys got work, they come up. I'm going to be there. You know, that's what it's going to be. It's going to generate the fellowship. I'm going to want to help. You know, my wife and I, recently, uh, with this opportunity with preaching out and, and going to churches and sharing the gospel, um, we had an opportunity to preach at a church, and I will not name the church, but it was 
it was by far one of the saddest things I've ever seen. The church itself was so run down. The bathroom was not working. The, the facility itself uh, looked like somebody had changed, uh, changed, um, uh, changed out the oil or something out in the parking lot right in front of the thing. There were car parts all over the, the front of the church area. There were things that the entire, I, I can't even explain it all, but you know what? It, when I saw that, I thought, what a testimony that is. What, when, when this outside world sees that, what are they going to say? Well, they, they don't really care at this church. Well, they don't really have the, 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 they're not really trying to, you know, bring people in. And if they are trying to bring people in, what are they saying? You realize that faith generates fellowship, but that fellowship needs to be right. That we need to do the right thing. We need to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Following the Lord with our possessions and what he gives us, the Bible talks about, it says faithful uh, in ch Matthew chapter 25. It talks about faithful in what we give, faithful in what we have. You know, we have to make sure that we are using what God gives us the right way. You know, we may not have anything great or perfect. It may not be the best out there, but we can make it look good. You know, that's why, I mean, this this church, you look at this, that you can see uh, it's been vacuumed, it's been cleaned, the, the pews are, are clean. You can see that God, what you have, God, God is using. You're keeping it nice. You guys just you did the whole foundation under here. I mean, a lot of work. That was a, a lot of work and a lot of money. But praise the Lord, you guys are using it the right way. And that's what it is. That's what this, this community is looking at. They're seeing, what is God giving them? Are, are they following God? Or are they just, you know, talking about it? Somebody that just talks about it is going to let things go. It's going to not care about what it looks like on the outside. You know, yes, I, one of those sayings that people would say that drive me nuts, well, what matters is what's on the inside. Yes, it does matter what's on the inside. But what's on the inside eventually should come out. In other words, it shouldn't look like a pig pen. Faith generates fellowship. Same with our Christian lives, my walk. If I said faith generates fellowship, but then I don't follow him with my life personally, what does this world see? How real is my faith? They're, they look at me and they say, well, he's kind of living a double standard. He talks about going to church, but then, you know, he's not in church on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and he's all in these other places that he probably shouldn't be. Is that what the world sees, or, or do they see you living your life the right way by, by <clears throat> as, as Romans 1, 7 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. Living my life, not just living it on Sunday, but living my entire life every day, trusting Christ, believing what I believe, but generates the fellowship to follow after him and do what his Bible says. The fellowship that we have, you say, well, what do we follow? The Bible, right here. God's word. You know, God's man gets up, he gets up and he preaches God's word. We follow God's word. You're not following God's man. As much as I love Brother Ben and I think he's an amazing uh, amazing man, you're not following him, you're following God's word. He is leading you, he's teaching you, he's trying to help you understand it yourself, but he doesn't want you to follow him, he wants you to follow God. And that's what the shepherd, that's what the under shepherd does. He directs you to God, he brings us, and he continues to lead you on. We need to follow him with our lives. And when we do, we will see, this world will see that our faith is real. That's what real faith is. You know, it's a common myth that ostriches bury their heads in the sand when they're scared. They actually, they bury their eggs in the sand. And so many times that people see their heads in the sand, you know, they're turning their, their eggs. That's what they do. They, the ostriches reach down, they turn their eggs in the sand, and then they cover them back up. That's what an ostrich, but so many times they talk about, well, an ostrich is burying their head in the sand. No, they're just protecting their eggs. However, it is not a myth that some Christians do bury their head in the sand. You know, we've seen it. We have people out there. They, they, they just want to, oh, it's all bad around me. I'm just going to put my head right down and, and I'm just going to ignore it all. Sometimes we can't ignore it. We can't. We have to live our lives. We have to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You don't just, you don't just stop where you're at. It generates fellowship. And that fellowship, just like Moses and Noah and every one of those that had to, had to give up something or do something or use their life and actually did some work for the Lord... It, God wants something from you. God has something for you. He's got, a, he's got a specific job for you. 
You say, well, I'm not very good at this or that, or I, don't, I can't play the piano, I can't sing. You don't have to. God has something specific, specifically for you. What it is, that's between you and God. But God will show you. And God will show you how you need to follow. Well, I don't know how to follow. Just get in your Bible. Read God's Word. And He'll speak to your heart. Talk to Brother Ben and say, hey, what can I do to help? You know? What can I do to be a, a, a blessing? Faith generates fellowship. And then thirdly, let's look at verse 14. Turn over to verse 14. It says, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Not only does our faith give us a foundation and faith generate fellowship, but faith guarantees a future. A future that we have in Christ you think about the future that God has promised us. You know, sometimes it just, it, it just, it, my, when you try to think about heaven and you try to think about what God has planned for us in the ages to come, it, it's mind boggling. You, you can't think of all of it. But it is amazing that God has taken so much care. You, you realize that our lives down here on this earth are just going to be a vapor compared to what the rest of eternity will be like? Amen. It's a vapor. And yet so many times we focus so much right here. What are we thinking about in the future? Do you realize that God is going to need people that he's going to appoint? You know, his new heaven and new earth. He's going he's to put people above and he's going to have people in charge. And who's he going to look to? We're all going to be saved Christians, but who's he going to be looking at? He's going to be looking at those who served him well. You know, what am I doing now in this little bit of a time that I have? Am I giving out gospel tracts that I can? Am I, am I witnessing to others? Am I talking to others about Christ? Am I being a good testimony? You know, faith guarantees our future, but it doesn't guarantee everybody in this world's future. We have to go out and share that faith. You know, until they accept that faith, they won't have that guaranteed future. The future of God, the Bible says, therefore being justified by faith in Romans 5.1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We have access because of faith, our faith in Christ, access to the glory of God, what, what he has given us and what he has promised us, the blessings. You know what? Faith guarantees a future, but faith guarantees you so much more right now. Can you, can you imagine living? I, I can't. Can you imagine living this life right now without God? Every morning, and some of you may have accepted Christ just recently. Maybe you, you really know what it was like not to have God in your life, that fear and that, that you know, every day waking up and, and unsure of what eternity is going to be. Or not having someone that you can say, God, I'm following you, I'm trusting you. You provide, you said that you will provide. You know, I'm trusting you. You know, when I come to a point with my family, there's been many times in our lives where, you know, we've come to the end of the, the paycheck and it, it's not to the next paycheck and you've already come and you spent all the money and you're like okay lord <laughs> i paid my tithe uh you know i didn't go out and i didn't gamble my money you know I, I bought groceries and i bought things but it just wasn't enough and lord we have a need i can turn to god and say lord i've done my part i need you to take up i need you just to come in and take care of the rest and he does but i can't imagine not having that. Not having a someone that I can lean on. That's why this world is in such a tizzy. That's why they're so frustrated and they're so looking for every answer everywhere. Because they don't have that real faith. And what they need to see is they need to see Christians. Real Christians with real faith. Living out their lives and saying, hey, I may not be perfect. And I, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not perfect. But I have a perfect God Amen. that I can rely on. I have the one that I can go to that loves me, that I can trust. Faith guarantees our future. The future is by the grace of God. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, 
and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Do you hear that? The ages to come that he will show forth the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us. That's what he's going to do for us in the future. That's what God guarantees us. He say, I'm going to take care of you. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's not us, but it's through him. It's through faith in Christ Jesus and through faith in God. If are we have, do we have the faith to trust and the faith to believe him? And as we build our faith and as our faith gets stronger, it becomes more and more apparent to those around us. You see, faith isn't something that you, you get all at once. Faith is built up over time. You say, well, you know, you think about those mountain climbers that go up Mount Everest. They didn't just go out there and decide the next day, well, I'm going to go climb Mount Everest. No. They started training. They started on some smaller mountains, some smaller places, and they started doing the training that they needed. Just as that, as, as a mountain climber does and, and prepares, we use our faith to get over those small mountains. Something comes in our way, something comes in our path, and we're like, oh, I don't know if I can make it over this one. But then you trust God, and you have the faith that you need, and God gets you over that that small mountain, you're like, whoo! And you're on that downhill slide, you say, praise the Lord. What that does is it strengthens you for the next one. Something that's coming in the future. Next one comes, and you're ready for the next mountain. And you're ready to go over. And that's how your faith grows. You know, if Noah hadn't trusted God and hadn't built his faith, do you think he would have built the ark? If Moses... If his, if his faith wasn't built and strong like it should have been, do you think he would have just left everything and followed God? Same with Abraham. Same with all the way down through every one of the, the, the men of God that had faith. It's a choice. It's a choice. We have to trust God. We have to have faith in him. But when we do, this world sees that. And they see something that real. They see someone that's real. They don't, you know, I, a lot of times they talk about, <clears throat> they talk about uh, whether something is, a, uh, oh, I lost the word, uh, <laughs> real or not real, uh, if, if, if it's certified or whatever, you know, you can tell if it's a fake, you know, counterfeit. When you see counterfeit money or something, it, it's not real. You can tell there's a little bit of difference to it. Now we're getting better at it sometimes, but there's a lot of things, paintings and all this stuff. People try to forge and make forgeries. If it's authentic, that's the word I was looking for, authentic. There we go. Is it authentic? Is it real? And when you're looking at something, if you some, most of the time you can tell it's not authentic. Oh, this is not real. This is, this is a good fake, though. Is that my life? Is that real life? Is that what Christian? Is that what this world sees when they look at us? Do they see something that's authentic? Do they see something that's genuine and real, or do they see counterfeit? Something that uh, that is something that looks a little off on that. That's all. It shouldn't be that way. How real is your faith? Because this, your testimony matters. How real is your faith? There in Hebrews chapter eleven it says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen." For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And that's what we want. Lord, give us a good report. I think back there in Nehemiah, I was reading, I've been reading through Nehemiah. I love the book of Nehemiah. I think that's probably my favorite book of the Bible is Nehemiah. But reading through Nehemiah, at the very end of the chapter, Nehemiah is trying to get things corrected and things fixed in the, in the uh, you know, he took care of it. He built the walls. He built the walls of Jerusalem because it was tore down. And he built it all up. But once he built the walls, it wasn't over. He had to fix what was inside. And I remember what he said at the very end of the book. The very last verse of Nehemiah. He says, I'm, I'm going to go over there because I'm, I'm going to misquote it. He says there, and for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits. But he says right there at the end, one last sentence. He says, remember me, oh my God. For good. Remember me for good. Remember the good that I'm trying to do for you. He said, hey, I'm trying to fix this. And all through that chapter, he was talking about 
He's fixing the, the problems that are inside the city and, <clears throat> and the people's, uh, you know, they weren't living a real faith. It was a counterfeit faith. And he says, yeah, I'm trying to fix this, Lord. Remember me. Remember me for my, for my good, for what I'm trying to do. Are we able to say that to God? God, remember me. It says right there, they obtained a good report. Do we have a good report with God? Is our faith real? Today, I want to think about faith and how our faith is looked at by this outside world. Is our faith real? How real is your faith today? Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, as we come together and think about this faith, before, Lord, the faith that this world sees, we are a walking and living testimony. Lord, the Bible, that some, the only Bible that some people see, but Lord, are we real? Lord, help us to be real. Help our faith to be real, and Lord, to be found upon you. We ask you just continue to be with us the rest of this day. Lord, continue to be with the, the following service that is to come. We ask this in your name we pray. Amen.